good evening there and welcome back to the channel tonight uh, you can see i'm wearing a hat it's pretty cold and that can only mean one thing the winter constellations are coming back to the sky so i'm very excited so tonight i'm going to shoot hopefully orion rising here at this windmill this typical old school dutch windmill i'm out with a martijn Kone will also join and i have some special plans for orion i'm not just going to shoot it regularly but i'm also hoping to do an uh, h alpha rgb shot and maybe i'll also play around with my star glow or diffusion filter so let's get started So at the moment we are just uh, scouting some compositions here, getting a feel for the area. Uh, if you stand a little bit further there we can get a really nice reflection shot of the mill. Now we are looking uh, yeah, uh, to some options a little bit closer where the mill will be larger in the screen. Uh, in the meantime Orion hasn't yet risen. Um, there are some apps for that uh, though to check out where the constellations will be at a specific time. Not for Android, at least not that I know of, please let me know. Martijn does have an app, how is it called? Skyguider Pro? Yeah, it's called Sky Guide. Sky Guide, yeah. and it's not for Android, which sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just looking to uh, what Martijn is doing, and uh, yeah, later on we will we'll just double check uh, which composition will match uh, our sky shots the best, and uh, we'll make sure we blend it in uh, in the right position. So uh, yeah, in the meantime, it's getting very cold, but also very clear. It's a little bit humid, but not too bad. So I think we'll have a brilliant night. So uh, we have tried various compositions. Uh, one composition is a kind of an opportunity shot. You can see there the bright light coming from the windmill. It casts a, a pretty nice uh, shadow which can act as a sort of leading line. Uh, so I put my camera low to the ground and uh, yeah, let's see how that uh, goes. The Orion is now rising right to the left of the windmill. Um, let's check out what the other compositions are. So this is a composition option number two. Uh, we have a uh, fence here which acts as a sort of leading line into the windmill. Orion will uh, rise to the right of the windmill and will come higher in the sky. So I'm thinking windmill to the left, uh, fence as a leading line and Orion right of the, at the top right of the windmill. So this might be my favorite composition so far. But uh, Martijn is shooting uh, another composition right now. He's also talking, <laughs> but we'll see what he has to say. And uh, yeah, that might be the third composition. So let's so check that out. It's a bit tight here, but uh, this is composition possibility number three. You can see Orion rising to the right of the windmill already. Um, I thought it would be a little bit more centered, so I'm not really sure if I this is my uh, favorite. Uh, the reflection is nice, but I think the balance of the image will not be really really good but i think i'll just uh, shoot it martijn said uh, it um, uh, showed a lot of green algae so maybe that's also not super nice but uh, yeah let's just uh, capture this and then I'll, i can decide later what uh, what i will do so i think my foregrounds uh, are now done my idea is just to pick one uh, foreground which is the best and just make a really good stack of it. A normal RGB shot, an H-alpha stack and also maybe uh, a stack with the uh, diffusion filter. I'll explain later. Uh, as you can see there, Martijn is uh, down there where our cars are parked. If I, uh, let me check, move to that side, there is the windmill. Uh, I can stay here or I can go down and I think down there we will just be fine there and we will be... Uh, very relaxed because we won't notice the cars that much. It's a really, really, really good night. It's uh, very still. Uh, there's a lot of humidity in the air, but still the sky is really clear. We can hear goose, geese, how do you call it? Animals. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's good to be out again. So while uh, Corneille is also arriving there behind the camera, we have uh, just decided to just uh, yeah, shoot our sky shots right here down at the dike. Uh, our cars are there, it's a really relaxed area and uh, we have enough space. Um, we have a really flat horizon, flat enough to uh, yeah, do a proper shoot. Uh, sometimes some cars come over the dike, which is uh, wow, 
maybe we'll have to uh, delete some uh, of the single of some of the shots, but that's uh, not a big deal. So yeah, let's get going and set up the star tracker and uh, see how it goes. <laughs> figure something out not to get any traction <laughs> on my power bank so I just made a knot here <laughs> my power bank is hanging <laughs> so yeah I should uh, yeah do that uh, sticky tape thing how is it called in English I'll put it up here so that I can uh, put it to my tripod <laughs> also with this new power bank <laughs> It was time for my favorite part of every night of Astro. It is that moment when your star tracker is running and all you can do is gaze at the stars above and have some relaxed conversations with friends. So while we hear Kone's uh Alarm because his uh, remote is broken. He has to do it manually. <laughs> Martijn is uh, uh, putting in his uh, hydrogen alpha filter. Of course, we are now uh, yeah, going into winter, which I love actually for astrophotography, especially if you have an astro modified camera, because a lot of hydrogen alpha heavy regions come um, yeah, very well into the sky for good compositions now. Uh, for example, Orion, of course, which we are shooting uh, today, but also uh, the Cygnus region is a very beautiful region for H alpha. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, still crystal clear. Maybe a little, a little bit of humid, but yeah, nothing the um, geo heaters can't fix. Furthermore, still quiet evening, very relaxed. Our foreground shots are done. I picked my uh, uh, foreground which I like most. Uh, Orion has to be a little bit higher into the sky, but that will yeah, happen anyway. For now, I'm just shooting a B shot and uh, yeah, I'm rambling on. Let's go on. <laughs> So uh, what just happened, uh, Mr. Auerhand, Huey Hand? <laughs> well, I had, I don't know if you can see it, but when I put on my H-Alpha filter, I had a very ugly blue, yeah, like leak uh, kind of spot in the middle of my frame. And I also had it in Winterberg. Uh, Winterberg. <laughs> Winterberg. Winterberg. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, since then I didn't use my uh, H-Alpha filter and now I have it again. And it seems to be light leakage from my viewfinder. So I just had some tape in my pocket Yeah. and I taped it off and now it's gone. And uh, who, whose idea was this? It was completely my own idea. <laughs> this is without the tape and this is with the tape. Yep, that's it's it. It's a world of a difference, as we say in Holland. <laughs> Light leakage from the viewfinder. <laughs> In the meantime, I was able to capture my RGB and H-alpha filter data. Time to give the diffusion filter another try. Yes, I'm getting a little bit stressed now because it never goes according to plan entirely. Hashtag Astro, we always say. Uh, there's uh, coming some clouds now uh, on the horizon. It's uh, not really bad, Orion is still above it. Uh, but still, I'm now going to shoot uh, with the uh, diffusion filter. It's a sort of star glow-ish uh, filter, but not made for stars specifically, so it's a bit strong. I think this is the Koken X840. I've used this before, but that was about yeah, two, three years ago. At least, um, anyway, the effect of this filter is that the stars, if you make a shot, uh, all appear very small. Uh, the star constellation are not really um, don't really stand out and this filter um, yeah, sort of targets only the brighter stars of the star constellations in this case I hope that it will highlight Orion what I'll basically do I'll have to put out that light because the reflection is pretty bad uh, I'll just make an exposure and hold this by hand in front of it and uh, see how it goes this is the layer I used from the diffusion filter. It does its job, but it was a nightmare to work with various heavy reflection issues. I'm not sure yet if I prefer to use an actual filter in the field or just use software like Starspikes Pro to get a comparable result. Hello. Knopje. 
Okay, so while our, uh, our cameras are now shooting, uh, it's going pretty well, I think. A little bit of clouds, a little bit of H alpha, and uh, a little bit of fog. I had some <laughs> trouble with a uh, uh, fog dew forming on my lens, which I've never had while running a dew heater, which is pretty weird, but I fixed it. Um, anyways, um, we were wondering what the sky quality was here. Uh, it looks pretty dark. Um, but maybe not the darker skies we've seen like ever, I think. No, no. But, nah, well, what do you guess uh, for, a, for a reading? What is this? <laughs> Wait Corne a has, <laughs> Corne has to do with her camera. <laughs> or we'll just measure really quick. My I thought think, is it's, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. You first. 21.5. No, 21.4. Oh, Martijn? 20.74. <laughs> Let's check it out. 20.25, so it's actually not that good. <laughs> but hey, we're shooting H alpha anyway, so um, I think we'll manage. Let's Whoa! go. <laughs> no, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> He's just faking it, really. <laughs> Right, so our cameras are now wrapping it up. Um, I think we've shot a lot, lot, lot of data. Uh, I uh, yeah, readjusted my composition about three times because it was a little bit better because the clouds were a little bit less, uh, etc., etc. But right now, yeah, I think I have uh, enough to at least make one really good uh, shot, uh, yeah, which was my favorite. Maybe two, three. Corne probably has 17 or? No, I'm not sure. <laughs> I was a little bit struggling with my H alpha filter. Okay, yeah, with uh, a light leak. With the light leak, so yeah. I I have some, but I'll need to see at home with how much and uh, what, yeah. I what I can use. Yeah, really relaxed night for the morning. Definitely. I think. Yeah, cool. You, Martijn, happy? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh -huh. I focused on uh, on two uh, good quality shots, so uh, I think I managed one deep scape on 50 millimeter. Yeah, your 50 millimeter shot. And okay. one on 24. So uh, yeah, a lot of H alpha, first time. Oh. Really curious how that all comes out. Corne has to <laughs> <laughs> Corne's alarm goes off, he has to manage his camera again. For now, I really thank you again for watching. And if our shots turn out to be any good, here are our shots. Thank you again for watching. <laughs> and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye. <laughs> Before showing you the final result, let me run you through what I did again this evening really quick. So I, at the beginning of the evening I've made one foreground exposure uh, which was my favorite is this one uh, with the fence as a leading line. Uh, 20 millimeters f 1.8 only 5 seconds of exposure <laughs> which is the Netherlands of course light polluted. Uh, ISO 3200. Um, for the sky at the other side of the dike I have done a stack of 16 uh, times 25 seconds at f 2.8 20 millimeters and ISO 1600 on a, a star tracker of course this is uh, one of the exposures. Uh, I have done a hydrogen alpha filter uh, stack also. I've done uh, six shots also on the star tracker at 60 seconds uh, f 2.0 20 millimeters and ISO 3200. And for the diffusion layer, I have only done one shot, which is this uh, ISO 1600, 20 millimeters, f2.8, and 25 seconds of exposure. Uh, and when you combine all this, uh, and how you can combine all this, by the way, I have done uh, a full step by step HARGB tutorial, uh, which I'll link up here. Uh, but if you combine all this, you can get a shot something like this.